what I really want to turn to today is talking about studying economics at the University of Sydney. And I really want to, if you like, have a conversation with you. So I'll work through some slides. I've got quite a few and we'll move through them fairly quickly, but really just talking a little bit about economics itself, but also why you'd want to study economics at the University of Sydney. I'd like to begin with this slide, which actually is very nice and also picks up on a theme that uh, <coughs> Sean mentioned. This pictures a new social sciences building in which the School of Economics is housed, and it stands next to one of the older buildings on campus. Um, and I should emphasize that the, the new social sciences building, building is truly state of the art, contains a nice experimental economics lab, and is a truly wonderful place, not just for me to work, but for you to study. So <clears throat> students who come to university and the open days and information days often ask me, you know, what is economics? And the easiest way I like to think about economics and what it is, is that it's all about understanding choices individuals or businesses or governments or other organisations make. What are those decisions that they make? And how do those decisions change if circumstances change? Now, why is economics so interesting for me is that Understanding how those decisions are made and how they change when circumstances change is that it provides insights into a whole range of issues from the very small to the very large. And we've, <clears throat> we've listed some here. Things that, questions like what can be done about global warming? Why are some countries rich and other countries poor? How we might we design an auction for things like telecommunication spectrum? Those types of questions <clears throat> are the types of questions that economics gives you, <clears throat> excuse me, economics give you a truly unique insight into. Now, you may be familiar in terms of economics with the dichotomy, if you like, between microeconomics and macroeconomics. We often think about macroeconomics along the lines of inflation and unemployment, which in the latter case is particularly important in the current circumstances. But economics actually covers a very, 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 very broad range of topics and, and questions. Things like exchange rates, exchange rates and interest rates, um, free trade agreements, and even at the micro level, how businesses, firms, might actually motivate their employees to work hard, and not just work hard, but work hard for the organisation. So if you're thinking, you know, this these types of questions appeal to you. The next question might be, well, why should I study economics at the University of Sydney? And the answer I generally give is that it's a great place to study. Now, Sean's talked about Sydney and, you know, the wonderful opportunities it offers. I also like to think that the University of Sydney, and in particular the School of Economics at the University of Sydney, offers really great opportunities to students for them to grasp and take with them over the course of their working life. We've been established at the University of Sydney for a extraordinarily long time, over a century, with the first Bachelor of Economics awarded in 1914 and the first Masters of Economics in 1916. Our graduates go on to employment in a whole range of institutions, some of the leading public and private sector organisations and firms in Australia, but also internationally. We also send many of our graduates into postgraduate uh, programs around the world. Recent graduates have, in the honours program, for example, have moved to, to universities such as Yale and also uh, Harvard. So what I'd say to you is that if you're thinking about, you know, coming out of school and what you should study, if you're thinking about where you'd like to move in your career, what I'd say to you is that economics provides a really great opportunity to expand your set of skills and also provide you a great set of opportunities as you go through life. So where will economics at Sydney take me? Well, perhaps more than anything, the important thing to understand about economics is that it gives you a set of skills. It gives you or trains you to think about the world in a particular way. What you do develop is a whole series of analytical and critical thinking skills. Because economics is all about, as I mentioned earlier, about understanding decision making. And to do that, what we do is we, we set out models, we create models, 
of those dis that decision making process. And we can use those models in a very flexible way to answer a whole range of questions. So perhaps most importantly, it's not the economics knowledge per se that you, that you attain when you study economics at the University of Sydney. Rather, it's the framework which allows you to see the world in a particular way, essentially through the eyes of an economist. And when you do that, what you do is develop a whole set of analytical and critical thinking skills, which are valued by employers and organisations around the world. The other really nice thing, at least for me, about studying economics is that it combines both, if you like, the qualitative, but also the quantitative aspect of understanding the real, the real world. Many of you may have heard about the concept of big data. In some ways, our life now is dictated by data. That data is collected by governments, it's collected by businesses and firms, it's collected by social media organisations such as Facebook. Understanding that data and being able to analyse it is not just critical skill, but it's a critical skill which is highly valued in the workplace. By studying economics, one of the things that you'll do is learn how to analyse and understand some of that data. Those types of skills are valued extraordinarily highly in your potential employers, whether or not they're in the public sector, places such as Treasury and the Reserve Bank of Australia, Australian Securities Exchange, or listed companies, publicly uh, large companies and small companies, which want to understand the behaviour of consumers and want to be able to analyse data which explains or describes the decisions and the behaviour of their, of their customers. Now, it's also the case that there's many other non-government and non-private sector organisations, non-government organisations, if you like, which are also interested in individuals, graduates, who can understand economics, the economic way of thinking, and value very highly the ability for individuals to analyse data and bring a particular perspective to it, and in particular, the economics perspective. So who employs our students? Well, it's really a mix where we send our graduates to the private sector, the public sector, international organisations such as the OECD, the World Bank. In the public sector, one of the primary, most prestigious employees in Australia is the Reserve Bank of Australia. And consistently over the past few years, some of our best and brightest graduates from the Honours Program, and indeed the Master of Economic Analysis Program, have moved on from studying at the University of Sydney to the Reserve Bank of Australia. Many of our graduates, most of our graduates in fact, also move on to private sector employment, commercial investment banks, insurance companies, any organisation where they value the, the ability of an individual to think about the world in a particular way. And in particular, think about the world from the perspective of an economist. So you might be asking yourself, how can I study economics at the University of Sydney? And one of the really nice things about some of the changes which have occurred to the curriculum over the past few years is that there's a whole set of opportunities, a whole different set of ways that you can actually study economics at the University of Sydney, both at the undergraduate and the postgraduate level. At the undergraduate level, the premier degree, if you like, that the, that the School of Economics offers and teaches into is the Bachelor of Economics. And there's different versions of the Bachelor of Economics, which I'm sure the international team will be able to uh, talk to you about if you're interested in. Within the Bachelor of Economics, you can major in one of the four majors that we offer here in the School of Economics. Those majors include economics, econometrics, financial economics, and environmental, agricultural, and resource economics. The one I want to focus on just very briefly is the econometrics, because that really picks up on a theme that I, that I was talking about a little bit earlier, and that is econometrics is, if you like, the statistical side of economics. It's all about understanding data and understanding the relationships between data. And one of the key things that you do in the Bachelor of Economics is to start to develop those econometric skills, those data analytical skills. Now, if you're particularly mathematically oriented, then the opportunity is there for you to deepen your knowledge of econometrics and statistical analysis through a major in econometrics. 
At the postgraduate level, we offer both course, coursework and research opportunities, which I'll talk about, talk about in a few minutes. So again, we've got the degrees listed here and the five majors available in the undergraduate degrees. Those five majors are, as I mentioned a moment ago, economics, econometrics, financial economics, environmental, agricultural and resource economics, and economic policy. That final major is not actually available in the Bachelor of Economics. Where it is available is in other degrees in which you can study economics. Those other degrees include degrees such as the Bachelor of Arts and the Bachelor of Commerce. And indeed, there's a range of other degrees that you can study economics in, including economic policy. The Bachelor of Economics itself is a three-year degree. As I said, it provides you a comprehensive understanding of the context of business and government by giving you a foundation in macro and microeconomics and econometrics. We've got four core majors available within the Bachelor of Economics. You will choose one of those four majors, but you can choose more than one when you complete a Bachelor of Economics. And indeed, that second minor or the second major can not only include one of those core majors that is listed on the screen, economics, econometrics, financial economics, or the environmental agricultural resource economics, there's actually a huge set, a huge range of second majors from a shared pool which are available to you if you're studying a Bachelor of Economics. Now listed on the screen there is that shared pool of majors and minors. And one of the really great things about studying here at the University of Sydney, and indeed one of the really positive aspects of the curriculum transformation which the university initiated a few years ago, is that it's opened up a whole range of opportunities to students to combine their study in economics, for example, with something else. Now, that could be something like history, it could be a language, which is invaluable in the increasingly in in connected, interconnected global economy. It could be something in computer science, one of the sciences, or indeed it could be something in the business school, something like accounting or business analytics. The key thing to remember is that in the Bachelor of Economics, it's an extraordinarily flexible degree where you will develop a deep knowledge of economics or one of the related disciplines and you can combine that with your other passion, whether it's a language, philosophy, or history, or one of the sciences. One of the other developments, one of the other components of the curriculum transformation which occurred a few years ago is the introduction of the Bachelor of Advanced Studies. Now, the Bachelor of Advanced Studies is an add-on, if you like, to a Bachelor of Economics, and it's, there's two versions of it. One version is the advanced coursework and project pathway in that you'll do further study in economics you'll also do or undertake a project for approximately one semester 24 credit points of study the rest of that final year of study in the bachelor of advanced studies is really open to you to pursue other interests it might be completion of a second major or it might be something totally unrelated which you feel as though you need to make sure that you're the most employable graduate that the University of Sydney is putting out. That might be a language, it could be some com computer science skills, or it could be some statistics. The second opportunity in the Bachelor of Advanced Studies is the Honours Pathway. And the Honours Pathway is, is one of the key characteristics, most important um, features of a Bachelor of Economics at the University of Sydney. So honours is a year long program during which you develop those undergraduate or those skills that you've developed at the undergraduate level. And in addition, undertake a self-directed research project under the direct supervision of myself or one of my colleagues. It's a full year program in which you undertake a series of advanced coursework units and that research project. So you might be asking yourself, why would I want to do it? And indeed, that's a reasonable question because the truth of the matter is that, you know, honours seems like a long way away when you're beginning your study at the University of Sydney. From experience, and I did an honours year at a different university, 
but certainly from experience in interacting with students here. What I know is that the honours year and the honours program at Sydney is, if not the best, or if not one of the best, the best in Australia. What it does is give you a set of research skills which can take you into very prestigious employment opportunities or take you on to postgraduate study at the leading, leading universities around the world. Indeed, companies aggressively pursue our best and brightest honours graduates. And that's because of the skills and the knowledge they develop, not just during the honours year, but during the foundation of the honours year, i.e. the three years of the Bachelor of Economics. One of the really nice aspects of the honours year, of the honours program, I should say, at the University of Sydney, is that it actually begins in your second year. And that really distinguishes the honours program here at the University of Sydney from every other university in Australia. What it does is provide a dedicated pathway through to that fourth year, honours year, right from second year. Now, one of the questions I often get asked about studying economics is, and in particular the Bachelor of Economics, is whether or not I should be studying commerce or whether or not I should be studying economics. The truth of the matter is, the only person who knows the answer to that question is you. The advice that I usually give to students is that if what I've talked about, all those questions that economics answers or tries to answer, the types of um, topics that economics covers, if they appeal to you and you feel passionate about those types of questions, then the Bachelor of Economics is the, is the degree, the program of study for you. The great thing about the new curriculum is that even if you're not doing a Bachelor of Economics, you can bind your study in your chosen area with study in economics. Now there's a series of other questions here on the, on the slides, econometrics, I, talked about that as being the statistical side of e economics. Um, do we offer professional accounting accreditation? And the short answer to that is yes. You can combine your study in economics and the Bachelor of Economics with the attainment of professional accounting accreditation. It does make for a very tight program, but it's one that with the correct planning from day one is certainly achievable. There's lots of opportunities in terms of internships and also exchange. And increasingly, I find students go on exchange, whether it's North America or Europe, and come back with a much better, with a fantastic experience and a much greater understanding and appreciation of what we do here at the University of Sydney. I just want to talk, talk, turn briefly to the postgraduate opportunities, and in particular, start off by talking a little bit about the postgraduate coursework opportunities. Our two sort of programs that we most focus on or which are the, uh, the highlights in terms of what we offer are the Master of Economics and the Master of Economic Analysis. The Master of Economics, Master of Economics is our oldest program and it's targeted towards graduates and professionals seeking further training in economics for career change or progression. There's no research dissertation within or embedded within the Master of Economics, but there is a capstone unit where you undertake some guided research. Recently, we introduced the Master of Economic Analysis. It's a slightly shorter program, depending on the prior qualifications in your background, but that program, the Master of Economic Analysis, is directed towards graduates and professionals, professionals who seek high-end training, if you like, to become a professional economist. And in particular, it's directed towards those individuals who are considering pursuing postgraduate research, such as a PhD. We also offer a dual degree with Fudan University in terms of the Master of Economics, after, um, upon the completion of which you get a Master of Economics from the University of Sydney and a Master in World Economy from Fudan University. So there's a series of questions here on the slide about common questions which are you know, often put to us by prospective students about postgraduate coursework opportunities, in particular the difference between things like a graduate certificate, graduate diploma versus a master's of economics, 
uh, credit available for previous units of, of previous study, whether it's a degree or particular units of study. In terms of the graduate study, the graduate diploma versus the Master of Economics, you can think about the diploma and certificate as shortened versions of the Master of Economics program or the Master of Economics degree. And one of the nice things about it is they provide a pathway into that master's degree. So you can complete the graduate diploma, or graduate certificate, and count those units that you complete towards your Master of Economics. Indeed, depending on your background, it's entirely possible that you'll recognise your prior learning or uh, prior qualifications, which will reduce the amount of time that you need to complete something like the Master of Economics. We also offer a number of research degrees. Those research degrees include the Doctor of Philosophy or PhD, usually takes three to four years full-time study, and the Master of Philosophy, which is one way to think about it is an abridged PhD, at the end of which you end up with a Master of Philosophy, usually one to two years full-time study. In terms of what you need to produce at the end of the PhD or the Master of Philosophy, it's a thesis which demonstrates some original research. Now, it turns out that 80,000 words is generally more than an economist would write if I would complete a PhD, as is the 40 to 60,000 words in a Master of Philosophy. And that's in part because more often than not, much of the work in those research uh, degrees is about the analysis of data some empirical work which tries to shed light on what's happening in the real world. If you're interested in either of those research degrees, then I'd encourage you to contact myself or others in the school or the international office. So why do you want to come here to the University of Sydney and in particular the School of Economics? Well, one of the really nice things about the School of Economics is that not only have we grow, grown substantially over the past few years, we continue to grow. This year alone, we hired five new members of staff, including three econometricians. All of our staff over the past five to 10 years have effectively come from the international market. We go out to the international market and hire the best and brightest to teach you. What those people, what my colleagues bring, bring to the School of Economics is a huge amount of expertise and a huge amount of passion about economics and about teaching economics to the next generation of economists. Because we are so large, we have exper expertise across a range of dis sub-disciplines within economics. At the top of the list there, you'll see game theory, which Sean alluded to a little bit earlier. And indeed, game theory is part and parcel, if you like, of both, both movies we discussed, Crazy Rich Asians and also A Beautiful Mind. But we also have ex expertise across a whole range of areas, macro and micro. So some of my colleagues focus on international trade, exchange rate intervention. There's a, a very large group, myself included, looking at empirical microeconomics, including what's happening in the labour market. Things like economic development in China and India, health and housing policy. In short, we have a very diverse group of individuals studying a whole range of topics which economics can shed light on and which we would love to share with you. Some common postgraduate research questions. How do I find a research supervisor and who do I contact? How do I contact research supervisor? So there's some information in that slide and um, I'd encourage you to, to pursue those, if, those links if you're interested. One thing I'd encourage you to do is that when you do make inquiries about postgraduate research, you include a little bit about it, about your background, you know, CV, transcripts, that type of thing. And perhaps most importantly, a little bit of a, a description about what you're passionate about, what you would like to undertake some economics research into. So I'm just about used up all my allotted time. I really appreciate having the opportunity to speak to you today.